depression or has lost anyone to suicide, so it's, it goes very intense into it. So, you know. And this is my second time ever performing live. It's February 5th. Come home. You just finished a project and you feel great. You leave. You put your bag down on the dining room table, say hello to your dad, and go to your room to relax. As you're lying in your bed watching your favorite TV show, you think nothing can be better than this moment. The cat jumps onto your stomach, demanding attention. You notice your other cat curling up at the foot of your bed. You think, that's weird. They only give me this much attention when something bad happens to me. This moment is perfect. Nothing bad can possibly happen now. You listen to their purr, close your eyes, you get lost in your show. Until you check your phone. You got a message from your friend. You think that's weird. I haven't really spoken to her in months. You don't realize that the next five seconds that you type in your passcode will be your happiest five seconds for a really long time. And her message reads, did you hear about Marissa? You hadn't, but you think you know. Your heart drops not quite to your toes, but to your knees enough. You're holding it up by two thin wires and ask, what do you mean? Thinking she'll say something like, oh, he's trans. He changed his name to Mason recently. I don't know if you knew. But she didn't. You're greeted by a punch in the face from the response, he passed away yesterday. I'm so sorry, Dan. I know you two are close. You just stare. You stare at those four simple words that have just ruined your life, and all you're able to do is no, 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 no. You scream, you cry, you belt. Maybe if you say it loud enough, it doesn't have to be the truth. Someone called 911, there's an earthquake about to blow inside this teenager on his bed, but when you pick up your phone, all you can type is M, M, M. Your dad bursts through the door and your tears escape. He doesn't know what to do, so he holds you close while you twitch and shake. Your head whirls with pain, anger, confusion. For the first time, you close your eyes. But all you can see is a noose wrapped around his throat, his beautiful face lifeless. You scream again. You've suffered a loss before. But at least that one was unpreventable. If everyone started changing their she's the he's and stopped calling to Marissa, 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 and started calling to Mason, 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 or even M, 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 maybe he'd be in our arms right now instead of hanging from his backyard. They had the choice between a dead daughter or a living son. And they chose to be close with him. He'll be cremated. His memorial is on February 20th. You go with friends whom you haven't spoken to in months. He was the only person from theater you were actually close with. Exchange awkward greetings, masked smiles, heavy-hearted handshakes, and take your seat in the overflowing church. As you sit, you learn. You learn about his school life, his hidden interests, his kindergarten antics, his obsession with wolves, and you realize a lot more people knew him than you thought. You close your eyes and look at his innocent younger brother, forced to grow up now without a sibling. Hold back tears in an attempt to just feel nothing. Flash forward, it's March 4th, and you're stuck spending his one-month anniversary pulling in all nighter trying to finish a project, but all you can think about is him. You tell yourself stories and try to relax. You listen to his favorite song on repeat, forgetting that if you fail this class, you'll be giving up everything, but that doesn't matter right now. All that matters is him. All that matters is my friend Mason. Flash forward again, it's June 13th. What would be his 15th birthday? You know you can't wallow. You pick up that face that you left by the door and await the next one, okay? And the next, the next, and the next, and the next, until finally you're able to celebrate. It's February 4th, 2017. A year. A whole year already? Wait, no. It's, it's February 4th, 2018. It's been two years. Two entire years without my best friend. Are you kidding me? Because there's still a stab in my gut whenever anyone makes a joke about depression, a joke about suicide, mentions suicide, says the name Mason, says the letter M, says anything about wolves, and you're angry because you didn't choose to live
triggered like this. He didn't ask to be triggered like this. You're still unable to look at a photo of him without imagining him kicking over a stool. You think, it's been two years. And I still call him just to listen to his voicemail. I hate him. I love him so much. And I wish I was there with him. Marissa, Mason, M, whoever you may be to whoever loved you. I will always miss you.